What's up guys, Will's Garage here. Today I'm going to be installing my new AP Racing Brake Kit. If you're curious which kit I'm specifically installing, check out my unboxing video linked here. But anyways, this is a kit that's designed by Essex Racing. And they provide a really detailed installation and instruction booklet which is really helpful. And utilizing that, I'm going to dive straight into the installation. So the first step is to clean the brake disc with dish soap. And I'm not going to lie, it feels really weird doing this. But the whole purpose of it is to remove the rust inhibitors and as soon as you remove the rust inhibitors you will see the brake disc begin to rust which is completely normal. Alright, let's get to removing the caliper first. Loosen the caliper pins. this part busting open the brake line using this 11 millimeter flare wrench so immediately after breaking open I'm gonna plug this up so I don't lose so much of the fluid but this part can get really messy it's gonna start leaking oh there's the first drop So everything is all slippery now. There we go. Plug it up. Caliper off. Second one. It's not that badly rusted. Thankfully, let's try this one. Not bad at all. Ooh, nice, the rotor comes off. All right, so here's what the stock rotor looks like. It has about 30,000 miles on it, along with a few track days. And there's no cracks or anything. I have never had any issues with it. Honestly, it's quite a quality piece. It's just that it simply doesn't have the thermal capacity for uh, track day and usage on the E92 M3. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the old stock rotor compared to the AP Racing Disc. The AP Racing Disc size is 372mm by 34 and versus the old rotor is I believe 360 by 30. So there's a clear difference there and the AP racing disc has a lot more cooling veins. Now we're going to remove the dust shield. There's three 10 millimeter bolts. Clean off the hub, make sure there's a flat mating surface. Copper and TCs on a retainer bolt. I have to put this on first been easier if I did this first but caliper bracket torque spec is 65 pound feet now there's the top one and we're gonna do the bottom Alright, 
Now we're going to put on the caliper. This arrow indicates the forward direction of the brake disc so that you can tell that you're using the correct caliper on the right side of the car. Torque spec for the caliper bolts is 40 pound feet of torque. Next is to install the stainless steel brake line. It uses a banjo bolt which goes through two copper washers to ensure a proper seal. Then install the stainless steel line back onto the hard line of the car. Now it's time to install the brake pads into the caliper. And this is one of my favorite features of the caliper because it's going to make changing brake pads between track and street extremely easy. Only two bolts need to be removed with a 6mm hex wrench and it comes right out as you can see with very little effort. I'm going to be running the Frodo Racing DS111 compounds because um, I'm going to be heading straight to the track and for the street I'm going to be running DS2500s. And while I'm already at it, before I bleed the brakes, I'm going to be installing new pads in the rear. I'm going to be running the DS2500s, which I'm going to use both on the street and track. For the brake fluid, I decided to use Castrol SRF because of its impressive wet boiling point, which is 518 degrees Fahrenheit. That's better than the dry boiling point of some brake fluids. As for the bleeding process, I'm going to be using the Motive Power Bleeder. And you're supposed to bleed the rear brakes first, which I've already done at this point. Now I'm just doing the front caliper. There's a bunch of air bubbles. I think it's all good now. Alright, here's a look at what the caliper looks like. With my track wheels on, these are the Apex SM10 wheels. There's plenty of clearance. So now I'm all ready for the track guys, stay tuned for the next video of how it performs. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.